Well, hi there, Gas Buddy family. It's been a long time since I've talked to you, but here we are with some new lessons today. Uh, not necessarily about gas prices. Those have been rather quiet the last few weeks, but these numbers, we often see them. You pull up to the pump and you see which one of these numbers. Well, of course, if you're on the West Coast, you probably don't see that number 93 so much. You probably see a lot more of that 91. But what do these numbers mean? What am I supposed to fill up with? We all see that there's different prices for each one of these different ones. So kind of a crash course on what these numbers are. Well, first of all, these numbers are referring to the octane rating of the gasoline. Here in the US, we use these numbers. They're called the anti-knock index. That's the numbers you see. Overseas, some countries are very different. They use what we call RON or MON. Those aren't people's names, no, not Ron and not Monica, but they stand for Research Octane Number and Motor Octane Number. And here in the US, we use an index of those two, and that's why if you go over to Europe, you may see different octane ratings, but essentially that's what these numbers are behind me, and what your car needs to fill up may be vastly different, and hopefully you're not one of those that overspends on this lavish 93 octane or 91 octane fuel if you don't need it. So let's start there. Why do we have different grades of gasoline? Well, that's a great question. It depends on what type of vehicle you have, how much power it makes, and basically what it needs. These numbers are uh, numbers that refer to the ability of each type of these fuels to resist pre-ignition or detonation, basically, uh, they explode too early the lower the number they are. So uh, a lot of vehicles today, in fact, most of our vehicles today, all require at least 87. Some vehicles in the last five to 10 years, if you've noticed, more of them have been starting to run on premium, which is 91 or higher octane. Very few cars are running on this 89. Uh, back about 10, 20 years ago, Dodge was the manufacturer that required mid-grade, but almost no one that I can think of requires mid-grade anymore. So you're either in one of two boats, you need the regular gasoline, that 87 octane, or you need premium, 91 to 93, and that's the difference. So how do you know what to get? Well, first of all, check in your owner's manual. Almost always, it's going to be listed right there very easy, but you'll also want to look for a specific word, whether that fuel is required or recommended, because a lot of cars may recommend a price of your fuel. There's really no downside to it, but depending on where you live, that premium fuel may be much more expensive. And that's why I say pay attention to if your auto manufacturer says you need it, it's required, then I would fill up with that. Or if it's recommended, meaning that they want you to fill up with 91 octane, but that your car can likely uh, still run on a lower octane number. So that's kind of the key here is to read your owner's manual. Uh, but if your owner's manual says 87, a uh, whole lot of myths about this, let me put those to rest that if you only need 87 octane and you fill up with that price, your 93 octane, you're really just wasting your money. Your car has no ability to sense that it's a higher octane fuel and it can't get any more performance out of that. Uh, but if your car is built to run on that fuel, uh, that's why it's important you put that in. I have a Mazda that's sitting in the garage. The newer version of that car is turbocharged and requires premium, but Mazda also says you can put in regular. You'll get less horsepower and torque, but that's kind of the trade-off. So, uh, like I said, if you don't need premium, if your car manufacturer doesn't require it, it's a waste of money. Don't fill up with premium. A lot of you, uh, a lot of back in the 70s and 80s, people thought premium was some sort of uh, better for your car. Now, there is some truth that premium does have more additives, more detergents to keep your fuel clean, but all grades of gasoline that are sold have to have a minimum level of detergent. So uh, a lot of what you see marketing premium gasoline is just that, it's marketing. Um, and again, so what is best in your vehicle? Check the owner's manual, but I know there's a big cost difference depending on where you are. Here in the Great Lakes, some gas stations will charge 60, 80, cents per gallon, even in some cases down the street here uh, near me, it's a dollar 20 cents more for a dollar 20, that is not cents, more for premium. So uh, depending on where you are in the country, California generally sees premium that's only 20 cents more. It's gonna change your mind whether or not you wanna fill up a regular or premium based on where you are. Now in some states, I know some of you are saying, well, I've seen 85 octane, what is the deal with that? Now. 
that goes back decades, back uh, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, in the higher elevations, you'll see this in Colorado, maybe Western uh, North Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, they sell gasoline, regular gasoline at 85 octane. Now, no manufacturer that I'm aware of wants you to put in something with low octane uh, so keep an eye on that. But a lot of that was done back in the age of carbureted engines. You could get away with using a lower octane fuel because of the high elevation, just like when you see on a cereal box uh, or a cookbook, it may say to prepare the food differently if you're at higher elevation. The same thing kind of applies to engines. That is, you can get away with using a little bit lower octane. Not that I would. If I was driving, I'd still put in whatever is required. So those are kind of the differences between those octanes. Most cars nowadays require lower octane. Uh, there was a question I saw out there earlier today. Why does it seem like more cars are requiring premium nowadays than before? That's a great question, and that's exactly right. In the last 10 years, there's been an uptick in the amount of cars that require premium, and a lot of manufacturers are starting to develop cars that run on higher octane fuel to meet those CAFE standards that used to be required. So keep that in mind. You're seeing a lot more vehicles that require premium. So if you're out there looking for a vehicle, make sure to look at that because a lot of cars now require premium. Uh, but other than that, like I said, no benefit to you if you're filling up with something that you don't need uh, and that's what's going on. And the other thing to mention too with premium is that the price of premium, especially here in the Great Lakes, has really risen in the last 10 to 20 years. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that some of the ingredients for that premium gasoline are a little bit harder to come by in some areas of the country. That's why California, the West Coast, premium prices tend to be a lot lower. You have a lot um, higher performance vehicles in California than you do say uh, in the Corn Belt where we have a lot of pickup. So that's your lesson for today on octane, whether or not you need higher octane, whether or not uh, your car requires it. So next time you go to the gas pump, now you know what these numbers mean. But for now, thanks for joining. Stay safe and healthy out there, and we'll see you next time.